Parker McCollum. All right, new album's out today, which, by the way, and we're going to play some of this stuff, but you told us about a song that made you really sad. It was a really sad song, a piano ballad here, right? It, yes, it made me sad. Well, why do you say it like that? Because I'm about to go to it. I want to see you get sad here yeah. in person. I don't know if I don't know if it makes me sad, but I think it's a, it's a sad song for sure. The album is called Never Enough. It's out now. Are you guys ready? Yeah. yeah. Here it is. Here's some of Have Your Heart Again by Parker McCollum. I could have your heart again. Oh, yeah, it makes me feel good, actually. Maybe. Why? I've had that melody for like six years and yeah. finally finished it with Ashley Gorley. Uh, when you say you had the melody, did you have the, without all the words, it huh? Um, did, what was the melody you had? Uh, it was just it was just the melody, just you know, mumbling over. Um, so I know you and I know me, and I know that I'm not what you need. And I had that forever. And then uh, and I'd showed it to a couple of different writers. Um, you know, and I was like, man, I just never have known what to do with this. Let's see if we can finish it. No one ever really took to it. I played it for Ashley Gordley and Lee Miller one night at Ashley's house, and he was like, damn, let's write that. Did you feel good when it was over? Like, that's it. Oh, like, yeah. Like, that moment. I've, I've, I've been holding it for a reason. I almost cut it on the last record, but it just didn't really seem to fit. Um, I like that. <gasps> yeah, it's, it's cool. in my head right now. It'd be real easy to do on tour every night. Yeah. <laughs> wait. Do you ever record a song and go, now I have to sing this back because it was such a hard song to sing? Um, no, I, I've always been kind of, you know, honest with myself about my ability. I've never tried to do anything too crazy. That's probably the craziest right there. Do you play piano? A little bit. Did you study piano or take lessons ever? Mm -mm. So how do you play piano? I just kind of learned some stuff on YouTube when I was in like high school. And, um, you know, my keys player, Charlie, will teach me some stuff every now and then. That's cool. Like he has to give you lessons. You pay him. Uh, I do not pay him for his lessons. No, but, but you, pay him, you pay him for like yeah, yeah, he's on keys player. He's on salary. Absolutely. So, and he has great health insurance. <laughs> so the lessons are free. Yeah. Uh, this is track one. This is Hurricane. <laughs> why track one? I always like track ones and the story behind why that goes first. Man, I just always think about tempo. Um, I probably overthink the sequ sequencing of the record too much. I sit on it for probably a month trying to pu push stuff around, see what kind of tells the story the best, you know, try to be in chronological order. But um, it was just ripping, and I don't ha I've never had anything else like it. Um, very different from any other song I've ever cut, and it's banging. It's a great show opener, so I thought it would be a good record opener. Two other notes about the album, and then a couple other questions. Mm -hmm. But the first note is, if when I was listening through, I like Ryan Bieber a lot. Like I just, I like That's him. My as a, I like him as a dude. He's great. I, I like guy. him as an artist. I like mm -hmm. him as a songwriter. And so this song, it's uh, number nine. It's called Speed. You and Ryan wrote this together. Mm -hmm. You won't always be hung up on speed. So you guys are writing that song. Where'd that come from? Like the genesis of that idea in that song. The word speed. I, you know really kind of developed this insane obsession with muscle cars, um, new and classic, and um, driving fast has always been something that I've liked since I was a kid, and um, I just thought about writing a song, and it was funny, I didn't even think about Montgomery Gentry song, Speed, whenever I was like, ah, oh, i got to write a song called Speed, that's a great title. I didn't um, either, too, now that you say that, but it didn't I didn't. even cross my mind yeah, until same. afterwards. Why, did people say something to you about it? No, I thought about it oh. when I was doing the sequencing, I'm like, ah. Oh, there is a song called Speed. But probably a hundred, though, yeah, just called Speed. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, that one, I'm glad I really like that song because, again, Thank I like you. Ryan and I like you, too. And then the other note was, you know, you are, again, a prolific songwriter. So for me to see a song that you chose that you didn't write means a lot mm -hmm. because that means you just loved the song. And there's only, if I'm right, one on the record. Mm -hmm. That's the case. And before I play it, so it's things I never told you. Why'd you pick this song? Um, I mean, it's every now and then people send me songs all the time and I don't really cut outside songs very often. I've only cut one before. It's Like a Cowboy. Stapleton and Big Alley Anderson wrote it like two decades ago. Um, and, uh, but I fell in love with the song after listening to it one time. This song was, was no different. And then I heard the line, you know, I had a Playboy stashed in a Johnny Cash LP sleeve in my room. And I was like, damn, I wish I would have written that line. I'm going to sing that song. Yeah. And do you battle with that, or are you cool now? You feel confident you'll just put a song on you didn't write? Cause, you know. Yeah, it doesn't bother me. I mean, I'm sure some people have something to say about it, but no, it's uh, I just, I'm such a fan of songs, you know? And I'm, I would cut major hit songs just because I like singing them if they you know, if people would, you know, not care about it, but they do. I know. Uh, here we go. Parker McCollum, his album's out today. Never enough. Also, parkermccollum.com to get tickets to his tour, which runs all through the fall. 
I'm going to do three uncomfortable questions from our listeners that they've asked. Are you ready? Sure. Question number one, how did Parker McCollum get famous? Parker McCollum is not famous. Um, Parker McCollum has a great following and a very loyal <laughs> fan base and is very blessed to get to do uh, it on the I'd level say he you're does. Fa- I'd say you're famous. I don't know. It like, takes somebody else to say that. I would say you're famous. Do you ever go into a restaurant or a bar? Or they're just like, hey, somebody took care of your dinner. I still fly commercial quite a bit. But that's so. okay. That means you're smart. It's, or I'm just not. If I was, I mean, like, you think about, you mean think J-Lo going to be in the... Well, I didn't say you were J-Lo. Yeah. I mean, she's but, like, so, but that's who I think of when I think of famous. Okay, fair like, enough. That's famous. Yeah. Now, does you Parker know. McCollum pay for his friends if they go on vacation with him? Uh, Do you pay for their, your friends' vacations? I have before. That's Okay. Mm. See? Dang. That's cool. I wish we were better friends. <laughs> All right. Has Parker McCollum ever kept underwear a fan has thrown on stage? Um, for how long? <laughs> At, uh, a day. We, uh, yes. Yeah. All right. There you go. The, and now I feel uncomfortable too. <laughs> huh? That's uncomfortable questions. <laughs> not that I like. Not that I personally kept them. Yeah. But, um, they did. They were. There was. There was. They stayed on the bus for more than twenty four hours. <laughs> there he is, Parker McCollum. The album's out. It's called Never Enough. ParkerMcCollum dot com. Let's clap for our friend Parker McCollum, everybody. Good to see you, buddy. There you go, Parker. It's, it's about-